Hey guys, Tris Dixon from the Math Academy. So, after months of preparation, we are finally ready to launch our first product. For more info about this bundle sales and exclusive offer, feel free to check out the link in our description box. If the link is not working, it means that the offer period is over already. You can still head on to our website to get access to this product. So without further ado, let's continue with our video. Thank you. Okay, for the first question here. First question, pretty straightforward. Translation. The one at the top is for representing changes in X. The bottom is for Y. So after shifting, this will be your results. And then rotate shape T to 5, 3. So after the rotation, it should look as above. Part number three, describe fully in the single transformation that map shape A onto shape B. So this one, it is a rotation of 180 degree from the point they met, which is 4.56. Question B, reflect shape T in a line Y equals to X, okay, after the reflection, okay, this should be it, so I didn't label anything because they didn't mention about it. Okay. Part 2. Find the matrix that represents the transformation in part B number 1. So it should be 0, 1, 1, 0. For more details on the matrix translation, you can go on to my Instagram account. There's a story there that I listed down. You can just screenshot that and memorize. Question 2. Part A. Pretty straightforward. Just substitute the value of negative 3. 0 and 1 into the equation, then your respective result should be 2, 2 and 6. After that, okay, plot down the points on the graph and then you can now draw out the curve. Part C, use your curve to solve the equation. So as you can see, the equation is actually the same as the one they gave us, which I call usually call it original equation. So it was equals to zero. So you just write down y equals to zero. So when y is zero, the intersection will actually be negative 3.2. Part D, 
by drawing a suitable straight line of the equation. So compare the new equation with the original one and find the excess value here. So the excess value after the comparison will be the 2x. So by sh getting rid of it, okay, shift it to the other side, you will get y equals to negative 2x. So I randomly set up some point. Okay, we got 0, 0. And when x is 1, y will actually be negative 2. So with that being said, we can now draw out the line. Okay, since we have two coordinates already. And the intersection with the curve will be negative 2.45. For part E, okay, so they say the keyword here is tree solution, okay, and it must be in positive, okay. So the top of the curve, okay, we usually call it local maximum is 6 and the local minimum is 2. So when you are at this 6 or 2, you only have two results. So anything among them will be the answer, which is 3, 4, and 5. We just choose any of it. Question number 3. First, find the parameter of the field A, B, C, D, E. So I actually circle it up. Okay, there's two things you need to do, which is the Pythagoras calculation for the triangle D, E, A, and D, C, B. Okay. So after you run the calculation, you will get DE's value as 130 and CD's value as 80. So add this all up, you will amount to 530 meters. Part B, calculate angle ABD. Okay, so for this one here, I use the cosine rule because I have the value of all three sides. Okay, by substituting it into the calculation, you will get 52.9 as the angle. Moving on to the question C, calculate angle CBD. Okay, so since we already have all of the side of the triangle, you can use any of it for the trigonometry. You can use sine, you can use cosine, you can use tangent. So in our case, I prefer sine. So by substituting sine CBD equals to 80 over 170, you run the calculation, you will get 28.1 as the angle. For question 2, the point C is due north of the P. Find the bearing of B from D. So I look back to the graph we have there. And based on the question, find bearing of D from B, I simply take 360 minus the 28.1 we calculated, where the result should be 331.9. For question D, find the area. Okay, I use uh, Two different formula for this. For those right angle triangle, I just use the normal calculation 
which is half times base times height for the one at the center because it is not a right angle triangle I then use half AB sine C which is the alternative calculation for triangle okay so by doing so you will get the results of 14,981.87947 meter square and to convert this into hectare divided by 10,000 you get the results as 1.5 hectare For question 4, part A number 1, pretty straightforward for range, you just take the biggest value minus the smallest one. For mode, you just look for the one with most, appeared the most. For median, you rearrange everything listed from small to big and find the center's value okay it is 22.5 after the calculation But for mean, you just add everything up, divide by the 14 student, you get 22.7 as the mean. But for part two, a student is chosen at random. Okay, so we have 14 students here and they wanted score of more than 24, which 24 is not included. Okay, so there's 25, 26 and 27. So there's three of them. So your probability, three over 14. For part B, the mean of the first N score is x okay so usually we know mean is actually total divided by the numbers then you will get your mean right so i constructed two parts to this which is total over n equals to x so total equals to nx this is our equation one but for our next equation total minus unknown over n minus 1 and your new mean is x plus 1 so total minus unknown you will get n minus 1 times x plus 1 okay so this is our equation number 2 so i'm using the elimination method here where i take 1 minus 2 then i am able to find my unknown here as x minus n plus 1 Question C, first thing to calculate the mean, you need the midpoint, okay? So after I find the respective midpoint, I multiply it by their numbers of days, okay? After that, divide it by 365 because they mention about one year. So the average, uh, which is the mean here, the results should be 16.6.
And for part two, okay, frequency density, okay, you should know the formula which goes by frequency count divided by class interval. As usual, for safety precaution, please double check the skill factors involvement or not. So just take the 85 divided by 5, okay, which is the class interval, you will get 17. So after that, you're, you're proven that there's no skill factor involvement, then just run the respective calculation and you'll get 5, 20, 24 and 1 for the remaining histogram. Question number five, calculate the area of this surface. So I basically split this thing up into rectangle and a circle. So for the rectangle, just take three times 1.2, whereby for the circle, just take pi times r squared. After the calculation, you get 4.71 meter squared. Part B, okay, so the tricky part here is the depth of this pool, okay, the other thing is they wanted it to be in liters. So you're required to convert the meter square okay, back into cm first because 1000 cm cubed equals to 1 liters. I then took the 4.73 meter square multiplied by 10,000 to convert into cm square then multiply it by 20 to find the volume okay this volume here is 946,000 cm3 okay to convert it into liters divided by 1000 then you get 946 liters after rainfall so this 1007 liters i can convert it Okay, into cm cubed first, then divide it by the size of the pool, which is surface area here, 4.73 times 10,000. Okay, after the calculation, you get 21.29. So minus it by 20, you will know that it increases the depth by 1.29 centimeters. Question six, okay. So first thing first, things to take note is the 90 students play football but not baseball. So what this represents is the students who play football alone only. Okay, so among those who play football, there's 120 person. Minus 90, you will get 30. So this 30 will be the part where they overlap. So for those who play baseball only, so 40 minus 30, you will get 10. There's one last part left, which is those who don't play football and basketball. So just take 240 minus everything that you have gotten, you will get the results as 110. Part B, they're referring to everything other than F intersect with everything other than B. So this part, it will actually be 110. So I already shaded 
uh, part over there to show you. A student is chosen at random, find the probability that the students play basketball but not football. So among those who play basketball only, it will be 10 and there's 240 students in total. So 10 divided by 240, you get 1 over 24. Part D. Among those who play basketball, there's 40 of them. Okay, 30 also play football. So 30 over 40 will be the probability when you select the first person. Whereby for the next one, you're required to minus both the numerator and denominator by 1. Then you will get 29 over 39. Okay, so this usually, uh, it's a hidden rule that apply to human calculation. Okay, so whenever it comes to people, okay, if it's object, then they will mention about without replacing. Okay, if it's uh, human, then you have to self understand and minus it off. Question seven, okay, just substitute the value in and then convert it into standard form. So Keating's assessment here is the four significant figures. So you get one point. 991 times 10 to the power of 3. Part 2 Rearrangement pretty straightforward. I first multiply S minus UT by 2. Okay. Then I get rid of the T square and the A there by dividing it. So it results 2 bracket S minus UT over T square. Part B, find the difference between the area is 62. So just take the area, okay, minus off with each other. Then you should be able to prove the equation. Part two of the factorization, you have two options. Either you use the one that I show in cross multiple. Alternatively, you just use your calculator. Then you will get the results as x equals to seven or x minus nine. So among these two variables, Okay, the negative 9 will not be accepted because your CM cannot be negative. So just sub in the value of 7 into each of it. Then you will get the longer side of the rectangle as 17 and the width as 6. Whereby for the smaller rectangle, the longer side is 8 and the width is 5. Multiply the variables by 2, minus them off, you get 20 as the and the results. Question number eight. Price of a book increases. So you just take 2.65 minus 2.5, divide by 2.5, then multiply by 100. You get the percentage increase as 
whereby for part B, so you take the 500 multiplied by the years invested and the percentage. This will get you the interest earned. Okay, the key assessment for this question is the term value of the investment. So for value, you are actually required to plus the capital back. Okay, then only we get the value which is 552.5. For question C, in a city population increasing exponentially. So the keyword here, exponentially, okay, the rate is 1.6%. So 101.6% to the power of 20. Okay, then you will get 137.3643891. Key things to take note. The 100 you are required to get rid of it because in the formula itself for exponential we always take one plus or one minus okay so they mentioned about increasing so you plus them up uh, so after you minus off the 100 percent you will get 37.4 percent as the final results question d okay keyword here decreasing exponentially so you take 100% minus R percent to the power of 22. So multiply it by the original amount, which is 6,400, and your results will be 2,607. You run the calculation, do the shifting, okay, root everything by 22, then minus it by 1, then you will get 4% as the final results. Question 9 here, okay, so this one is a function question. First, I identify the H bracket 2 value, okay, it is actually 9. So how do I get it? Because 3 to the power of 2. So G bracket 9, you run the calculation again, you will get your final G value as 82. Part B, first thing that I did was to change Fx into Y. I then swap the X and Y with each other. Then part 3 rearrange and identify the F inverse as X plus 2 over 7. Question C, okay, so GX is actually X squared plus 1, then this entire X squared plus 1 is considered as X again, okay, so you will get bracket X squared plus 1 bracket square plus 1. After the expansion and calculation, you will get X to the power of 4 plus 2 X squared plus 2. So your A will be 1, your B is 2, and your C is 2. Section D, find x when h fx equals to 81. So h, okay, the fx value will actually be 7x minus 2 equals to 81. So by substituting it into hx, you will get 3 to the power of 7x minus 2 equals to 81. Change the 81 into 3 to the power of 4, then you compare the power only. So we get 7 x 
minus 2 equals to 4, x equals to 6 over 7. Question 10. Okay, so they mentioned about a cube here. Cube has a characteristic that all of the side is the same. So I just put x times x times x equals to 1000. So x cubed equals to 1000, x results will actually be 10. But for part b, a sphere with a radius of x cm. So 4 over 3 pi r cubed equals to 1000. Okay. After the shifting, you will get r as 6.2 and the details calculation is shown over there. Remember for part C, okay, find the volume V equals to 1 over 3 pi times x squared times 2x. Okay, this results will also be 1000. So by running the calculation and shifting, you will get the final results as 7.82. Question D, okay? So remember, you're required to calculate the triangle shape first, then multiply by the width of this, okay? So half times the base of the triangle X, the height is seven over two, then multiply by the width of 27 X over two. So after the calculation, you will get 27x cubed over 8 equals to 1000. So you rearrange it, then you will get 6, 2 over 3 as x final results. Question 11 is the trickiest among all. Okay, I made a mistake on the time calculation, so I will cover that later. So let's focus on what we have here, which is the distance calculation first. So we have, I split it into section one, section two, and section three. Okay, the first part, distance calculation, I took the speed multiplied by the time. So the time is slightly tricky here because it was given in minute. So you require to convert it into hours through taking 55 divided by 60. So you will get 16.5 kilometers. Number two, okay, find the arc length. Okay, I take the degree of 55.5 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 6400 of the radius. So after the calculation, you will get 6199.41 kilometers. But for part 3, 
I did the same thing again. Okay. I take the distance. I take the speed multiplied by the time taken. So we get 104 kilometers. So the total distance here, after adding everything up, is 63, 6,319.91. So the time calculation that I have there wasn't entirely wrong but the problem is the question specifically mentioned about from his home to Camonix. Okay, so the things that I left off for the time calculation is the, the transit time, the waiting time. So after adding the transit and waiting time in, okay, arrange the time calculation properly, you should have 16 hours and 6 minutes. So you just take the total distance, divide by the total time, then you get the final results of 393 km per hour. So this will be it for this paper. This paper itself is more on complicated they need you to run a calculation but it's not hard if you do it slowly okay so thank you for watching i wish you all the best for your upcoming examination